Hiya, you're listening to another round of the With Just 15 Defeat show. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about the scene in general, and specifically the British scene. And we're going to be talking about 2015 and our predictions for 2016, and where we think individual people will be this time next year. So we're going to talk about the notable guys on the scene and then we will just see how that goes. Okay, so we'll start at the top. We're going to talk about, firstly, we've got Tyson Fury. He's now the undisputed champ. He won the title from Vladimir in a very boring fight. Um, But he, he won the straps. And he's going into 2016 as the champion as, and as the guy that pushed Klitschko off the top of the tree. So he's going to go into the new year with a lot of confidence and a lot of confidence that he could beat anyone. I know that he believes that. Can he beat anyone? When you look at the rest of the scene, I think he would cause problems for pretty much anyone due to his size and unpredictability. He's pay-per-view boxing uh, in and out of the ring he's good for the sport and next year in all probability he's going to be going in for the rematch with Vladimir probably before the summer sometime I would expect him to win the rematch and keep the belts and then he'll go into a second fight of the year probably late of the year and, it, and it's difficult to say who he might go up against but I would think that we're talking about someone half decent and it could well be a Deontay Wilder and Wilder Fury is probably the best matchup in heavyweight boxing at the moment. Two interesting guys, two guys that are in their peak, two guys that are quite different. Deontay Wilder has a lot of power but he hasn't been in the ring with anyone of any note and he's managed to get to 35 undefeated rating it's, it's, it's quite crazy um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes obviously before before that uh, Fury just had a uh, had a biding time match against Hammer because uh, of all that nonsense with uh, David Hay in the year so my prediction would be that this time next year, Fury will still be the heavyweight champ of the world. Next one on the list, Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua had an interesting 2015. He competed in five five matches. Five matches. Uh, Jason Garvin, Rafael Love, Kevin Johnson, Gary Cornish and Dillian White. He dispatched the first four in pretty devastating fashion. Devastating, particularly Gary Cornish, poor sod. Um, And then we got onto Dillian White. We've got the heavyweight breakdown of that, so if you want to pause this, go and check that one out. Go and do so. It's on the channel. It's quite an interesting listen. Um, But as we know, it was where Anthony Joshua first ran into a little bit of trouble. We, we saw him get hurt. Yeah, he actually got hurt. And he, he rode that and he managed to keep on and he managed to get the win. He managed to get the stoppage. And that's the important thing. He then moves on. We don't quite know who he's going to be contesting in April. Could be Chisora. That's what it sounds like it's going to be. And I would have to say that I think Chisora is going to be fed to him. It's a shame for Chisora, but I think that Joshua will probably stop him. He will then fight. If he stops him comfortably without any problems, which is possible, I think Joshua will probably have another two fights. If he runs into trouble against Chisora, i.e. he wins, but it's a it's a bit of a mish. We might only see one later on in the year. Um but if he if he if he steamrolls through Chizora, he'll probably have a bit of a nobody in the summer. Uh, just some some bum to get knocked out. And then we may see that David Hay 
at David Hay probably November time, and it'll probably be a massive pay per view event uh, for Matchroom. Will he win that fight? I've already said in a previous show that I think that David Hay would stop Anthony Joshua now. Another 11 months' time, would he be able to beat David Hay? Oh, it's a big, big question. It's a big, big question. And I'm going to say, this time next year, he's still going to be undefeated. He's still going to be undefeated. So the next on the list is Del Boy, Derek Chisora. As usual, uh, well, 2015 was not a great year for him. Not a great year for him. He got four wins out of four that he competed in, but they were against just nobody. I'm not even going to read their names out. I can't be bothered. They're just so low-ranked um, opponents, uh, varying in weights, and you'd expect to beat, him, beat, beat all of them. One of them he went ten, 10 rounds with, and he won on points, which is pretty poor but I think you've got to appreciate that Chisora came off a really disappointing end to 2014 the Chisora fight oh, sorry the Tyson Fury fight where Tyson completely and utterly dominated him for 10 rounds before being before he was put out of his misery so I don't know he, I, I like Chisora I think he comes across as a really good guy he has the potential to be a top boxer maybe maybe he's already hit his peak he had those th- those runner fights where he lost the three of them Hellenius Klitschko and Hay and he was in all of those he was in all of those matches and he did he did well for himself but he lost them all yet the Hellenius one was an absolute disgrace robbery but the others the others obviously weren't he was he was in it with Vitali and then he was knocked out by David Hay. Um so as I previously said, I think Chisora's gonna end up having a match up with Joshua. It's gonna be fed to him. It's actually an interesting fight. I would really look forward to watching that. But ultimately Joshua looks like a man on the on a mission. He's a beast and he can stop Chisora, unfortunately. It's a shame, but but he will stop him. So if that do, if that matchup does happen, the career will begin to unwind for Derek, because another high profile loss. Where does he really go? Um, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing a Chisora David Price fight as the next fight to see where both of those two guys are. Probably won't happen, um, but but we'll have we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. I would suspect that this time next year, Chisora has at least one defeat, and he is down to British British level, unfortunately, and he's going to struggle to get to the heady heights of where he once was. Next on the list is David Price. Now, we've had another heavyweight breakdown with his, with David Price. If you want to check it out, it's about his fight with Erkan Tepa. Quite a controversial discussion point. But but ultimately, the uh, there was talk that this was going to be... That, his, that David Price's last fight against Erkan Tepa, which he lost uh, when he was sparked in the second round, was going to be a known, known contest... But it turns out that it hasn't been turned into no contest. So he officially has lost that, despite the fact that Tepa uh, has been suspended for banned substances and all that stuff. Okay? So, David Price, as I said in my uh, Pebbleway breakdown, he has potential and he has that absolute devastating power to knock people out and that sometimes is the equaliser to having a glass chin or even lacking skills now a change in trainer for David Price in 2016 I think is absolutely essential he needs to bring in someone different I think it's obviously a real shame that um, Adam Booth didn't fancy him 
when I think there was some talk about that a couple of years ago, I may be wrong, but it just didn't work out. Um, he needs a good trainer, a trainer that's going to train him to be a boxer that fits his size and the tools that he has at his disposal. And if that's the case, then he can get there. Now he's got this Urkentepa defeat. What does that mean? Um, it means that he's going to struggle to get decent opponents or he's going to be selected as easy pickings. Although, as I say, because he's got that devastating power, people might not even give him that time of day. So we'll have to see how it goes for him. But I think there's some British fights out there. There's some European level fights, some interesting guys that he could get in the ring and he could get some notable wins and then possibly build himself up. You look at who he fought in the run up to the Turpa fight. He, he wasn't, he was out in Germany. He was fighting not very interesting guys and he's ended up getting the Turpa fight and he's losing it. This time next year, I think he might go on a run of wins and put himself back in a position to get some half decent fights. So I don't think he'll lose in 2016. So then we move on to Huey Fury. Huey Fury is an interesting one. Obviously relative of world champion. He's only 21 years old. He's got 18 professional fights. Uh, 18 professional wins. He looks like a real skilled guy. Um, he looks like he's taken a bit of damage over the years. I don't know. When he speaks he doesn't seem quite... He's not as bright as Tyson is. But, but anyway... Um, he hasn't fought anyone really... He's fought kind of mixed bag of guys, really, but they're obviously protecting him. They're building him up slowly. I don't know whether he'll end up getting a uh, a big fight in 2016 or whether they're going to wait for him to get to 2017. He'll still only be two, 22 years old, which is mental. But you think his last fight was against Larry Alamabimo, if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Larry Alabamiwo, yeah, who is just another guy who's got done for drugs in the past. I think he kind of tried to defend it, but ever since he's come back from his suspension, uh, he hasn't really been able to buy a win, and he's been he's been beaten up by a who's who of heavyweight boxing. It's quite embarrassing for him. I don't know why he bothers to continue. To be perfectly honest, but he's obviously making a few quid of each fight. So there you go. Uh, Fury, I think, will end up 2016 undefeated again, having not really had anyone of any note, but possibly building up for two, big 2017. We may even see him get in, get, get in line for a British title, depending on who has it at the time. Um, so the next on the list is Dillian White. Dillian White, obviously, as previously discussed, had the big, heavy, the big heavyweight uh, pay-per-view showdown with Anthony Joshua. He did himself proud, actually, and he, he got some damage in there, and he's... I think people might be getting a bit excited about this guy. He's lost, but people saw that he had power himself. He's a bit of a tall car, and he could be an interesting guy on the scene. Now, again, he might be an interesting uh, opponent for Chisora. So we'll have to just see how that kind of goes. I think he's probably going to have a couple of interesting fights. I think he'll probably lose again in 2016, but he might get him a couple of straps. He might be able to get a couple of straps at some point in time. And I wouldn't be surprised if he builds himself up to possibly getting uh, the world-level scene by maybe 2017, into 2017, something like that. Next four or five fights, if he gets some good, good, good wins together, we'll have to see where he goes. Then I'm just briefly going to talk about some of the others. Um, you got Gary Cornish, who got who got uh, dispatched by Anthony Joshua. Now he had a bit of an inflated record. He looks like he looks. He's a big guy. He's a big guy, um, but he got dispatched with ease from Anthony Joshua. His record's very very padded. Really, he probably wasn't wasn't ready for the Joshua fight, but I expect that he was offered quite a lot of money. For that, for that fight, and he took it. We'll have to see how he gets on in the next in the next year. I don't think he's going to make it higher than British 
possibly Commonwealth if he's lucky. Um, and I would assume that over the course of 2016, he's probably going to continue fighting absolute nobodies. So I wouldn't really get too excited. So according to Box Threat, the next one on the list is Michael Sprott. So I don't know whether that means that the list is quiet. It's not very deep in terms of top talent in the British uh, British rankings, but we'll just we won't even bother talking about Sprott apart from the fact that he's lost a lot. So it looks like just having a brief look, it looks like there's a few up and coming guys and a few on the on the downer. Um, but the one guy we will talk about is the guy that's returning after quite a while out and that is the man David Hay he's returning he's got his big uh, comeback fight against Mark DeMori after three and a half years out uh, it's going to be at the O2 Arena it's in a couple of weeks now where we know that he's going to apt- even a shot David Hay will dispatch Mark DeMori in two rounds so it's an absolutely pointless bout but where will he be in 12 months' time? That's the interesting question. Now, if he does have the passion for the game and he wants to stay in it, this is not just a way of him making money against a very poor opponent that's going to make him look half decent. We know he has the tools. We know that he has got the power, he's got the speed, he's got the footwork. He can really cause problems for pretty much anyone in the entire division. So... What I would say is, I think that he'll probably fight Anthony Joshua at some point in the year. And he'll make some money. He'll make a lot of money. And I would think that if he fights Joshua at the back end of 2016, it'll be a great fight. But I'm picking Joshua at the back end of the year. The back end of the year, I think. If it's now, tomorrow, he can win. So that's how I see the division in 2016, how I see it shaping up. So we'll just have to wait and see see how that develops. So I hope you've liked the show. If you have, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Please leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. And we'll see you in the next with just 15 defeats.